Hello and welcome to Biofuel Generator 2.0 and as you can see from the opening scene we've got of this particular generator I have replaced the uh, equivalent exchange box that was creating bone mill with an actual skeleton spawner this time so if I had found in the world a skeleton spawner I could use it to create the bone mill that I needed and as you can see as long as I'm in proximity I will get quite a sort of regular and consistent supply of skeletons and what I've got going on here is I have some obsidian pipes placed in the water trench powered by the, tor the um, redstone engines in order to suck up the arrows and the bones. The arrows and the bones are then transported through a sorter which separates the bones from the arrows because the arrows are of no use in this situation. The arrows just go off to a chest over there ready for me to use for defending myself and I have a crafting table that creates the bone mill which then puts the bone meal in a chest and this is all from the skeletons that have spawned while I was building all of this around it so it's very very reliable and you'd only have to visit it and stand next to it for 10 minutes or so and you'd massively stock yourself up on bones again it's very efficient and then using these bones what I've got is exactly the same system that I had before I have a deployer one that deploys bone meal one that deploys seeds and then I have a block breaker which fires at the same time which retrieves the wheat that has been created now I've been experimenting using world anchors to try and work out which sections of my generator needs to be continuously monitored in order to keep everything working even when I'm not around but I don't really understand enough about the world anchor at the moment so I don't think it's actually needed in certain areas so when we have collected our seeds and our wheat which we now collect at a much slower rate than we had before but this time we're distributing it out and we're distributing it out with a favour towards passing more seeds to the generator than to our chest. This is because we have slowed it down pretty much so that we have efficiently got or effectively got a system where it will return one seed at the same speed as it draws one seed out. So therefore it's pulling in and putting back the same number of seeds as it's using, therefore keeping it in this perfect state of continuous sort of progression. And then we have seeds and wheat being passed down to the generator. Now in or on the past video in video one I didn't really have enough. It wasn't really very consistent. I wasn't getting enough generation going on. And I had a look at adding a reed system to the generator. So reeds are another thing that we can grow that we can use to create biofuel. So what I have here is a series of rows of reeds and then a block breaker one block above so the base unit is never taken but periodically over a course of every 40 seconds hopefully we've got an example of one somewhere there we go we have the reeds grow so the reeds grow at a random um, after a random number of ticks within the game so it can't be predicted and I can't force it with bone meal or anything but when the tick occurs it takes that that reed from the top and sends it down to our chest. Now I have since learnt that I don't need the repeater in the middle because I'm using the redstone alloy wire which has a much longer distance but it means that in the future version I can take this out and get an extra row. Once again I've tried to use the world anchors to try and make sure this whole thing stays alive but at the time didn't really understand the whole 3x3 three 9x9 three, nine nine thing so that's a bit wrong it doesn't really matter um, but that produces a fairly comfortable amount of reeds which I then draw from the chest to the generator. I've also used or tried to link all of the components together with one redstone wire to ensure that I can turn the whole generator on and the whole generator off but um, it's a little bit messy because the, for some reason the wire likes to join the pipes. So at the back of our generator we have wheat, seeds and reeds all being pushed through, 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 through into the front and then we have our chest of arrows which has got quite a lot and then we have the big on off switch and our generator so previously we were just using our wheat and our seeds but now we've added in the use of the reeds to create these sort of plant balls so the plant balls are then pushed forward in exactly the same way as they were before so if you watched the first video or you've been linked here from the first video this is all very similar we're just basically trying to find as many different ways of creating these these masses or these balls so that I can then turn them into fuel at a fairly consistent rate. With these three 
options and the amount of production that I've got going on. Um, I do have only enough balls being produced to need one compressor. So one compressor then feeds one table, which is being uh, being used to create the bio cells. I've also fixed the need for the drop and the collection from the obsidian pipe by using this. Um, I can't remember what it's called now actually. It's like a, I think it's an induction or something, induction pipe. So basically, if it can't put a um, cell into here rather than dropping it on the floor, it sends it round in a loop which comes back into the back of this chest which has got a fairly large number in it. To feed the cells I have exactly the same system as I had before. Running along the top I have a pipe from what we'll get to a bit later on which is a basically a macerator and a furnace which is taking any tin that my quarry finds and turning it into the cells at that table just up there to hopefully keep the system populated with tin cells which it needs to create the biofuel. Biofuel, uh, bio cell goes into the extractor becomes the biofuel as you can see as it was before we are keeping ourselves just exactly in time so every time we extract or create or finish one one arrives very shortly afterwards to keep the system quite continuous. Canning machine takes the cells, puts them into the cans. Canning machine sends the cans through into here. Now before I built the furnaces and got everything running correctly I did get the advantage of having a stock built up and it has quite consistently maintained that stock. And then we have our retrievers from Red Power sending our cells to our generators. It's really as simple as that. And what we have here is um, a series of our system which helps us maintain this chest. So we have two generators on at the moment. We're about to get our third I would imagine. And what's going to happen here is this will increase the amount of power we've got stored much more or considerably more in our MFSU because we have the three generators running. However, running three generators will deplete our stock. So it will reduce this down to probably about half of that. So what this system is here is a series of moving blocks with the framework on top which will pull the pipe away on a set period of time. So realistically around the back we've got a timer which is basically telling these two moving or movement blocks to pull the framework away and then put it back. So periodically the system will itself control how many generators are running. So it's completely automated. Now I don't have to come back every now and again and check how many cells I've got how much power I'm running, how many generators are burning, it will do it all on its own. So it's still continuously or adding in the filled fuel cans into the system and then I'm not quite sure, I think it's I think I've got it set to 10 minutes so every 10 minutes or so this will turn off then it will burn through a series of fuels then it will come back activate it again and go away, come back, go away, come back periodically. And as you can see with three generators running and all of the systems in place behind this being powered so everything that we'll look at from now on is being powered from this unit you can see that we are still increasing now it's a very gradual increase but with three generators running we will increase the power that we're using where uh, which is obviously ideal what we want which means we'll always be in, in surplus of fuel so what we have at the end here is a series of chests now I've just found these crazy crystal chests oh I just missed it I couldn't have timed that worse so there we have the blocks moved out of the way so this will burn the two fuel tanks that it's got but then for 10 minutes only these two will run which will maintain our power level but necessarily will increase it for us depending on what else we have running but and then it, as, it, as the stock fills up again oops that's not the right one as our stock fills up again it will then put it back I'm still trying to perfect the timing so I think 10 minutes um, away and then 2 minutes back only gives it two fuel tanks which isn't really ideal we probably want to give it more so I could then obviously take down the amount of time that it's away for so take it down to about six or seven minutes and bring it back more regularly it's just about to get dark so I'll take advantage of this creative mode thing to turn it back to dawn so these chests represent my basic sorter from the quarry so it's just taking things that it finds and putting them into the chest I've matched for us or not as the three that I've clicked may be but we'll just grab some coal because I'm going to show you what else we're running in the background so powered by our system we do have a quarry so our quarry has now got quite far down in the world um, but it's using all of these resources that are being channeled into all of these chests now I'm going to imagine it's actually just quite full it's actually overflowing so I need to find different 
place to store all of my cobblestone. So I've, I've, I've done this because I know that if I was to play Tech It on a server, it's unlikely that they would allow the uh, equivalent exchange because it's obviously considered cheating by some people. So this is why I've used a skeleton spawner. Skeleton spawner. Oh my God, my words are, are leaving me now. My skeleton spawner because it means that I don't have to change anything into anything. But it does mean I get a lot of surplus stuff that I don't have a use for at the moment. I can obviously convert it by putting it through a furnace into stone, put the stone into stone bricks, etc. And use that to build all sorts of other wonderful things. But what I have chosen to do is, using this particular pipe here, is extract a few items into a secret operation. So I can't use the equivalent exchange to build me what I want. But I can use this lovely and wonderful system here to build me what I want. And this is my diamond making facility. So. I'll just throw some in there. If we get some coal being delivered from our quarry, the coal goes into a macerator that produces coal dust. And then the coal dust will go into this crafting table and it produces these lovely coal balls with a combination of flint, which is also being fed in from the quarry. Coal balls are then compressed. The compressed coal balls will then create a compressed coal ball, which is then surrounded with obsidian. That creates this crazy sort of coal chunk, and then once again we compress our coal chunk and we get diamond. So, this is my non equivalent exchange diamond making machine. So, utilizing the power from the same circuit that we've got upstairs, so from the same, don't know why that's over there, same circuit, same power, it's all being drawn from our biofuel generator. We are using the biofuel generator to power a quarry, and then we're using a quarry to create diamonds. So without equivalent exchange, I can still get the desired results because I found myself a skeleton spawner. Okay, once again, um, some creative and constructive feedback would be great because I'm still looking to try and improve it. Uh, I'm thinking that something to do with increasing the number of reads um, that I've got access to might give me more uh, enough just reads alone to have a second second canning machine, which would then give me second option for more generators and more power etc so I'm going to be looking into that if I go for a version 3 ok guys thanks for sticking with me for 10 minutes hope you've enjoyed I would always appreciate a rate or a comment and if you enjoy Tech it videos and you've enjoyed my Tech it videos please subscribe because I'm absolutely loving playing Tech it at the moment so I'll be throwing up quite a few videos of things that I've been building because it's just so much fun to take advantage of all these extra and crazy features that the world has ok bye for now Thank you.